Welcome to another advanced Unity game dev tutorial. First of all, when you saw the title, you might have been wondering, what is a chip bar? And to be honest, I made it up. Because there is actually no word for it, but what I consider to be a chip bar is a normal UI bar, like this. It can be for health, it can be for energy, anything you want really. But whenever you lose health or remove some amount of it, you get this white flash. And you can see this in many, many games, uh, especially RPGs or shooters. And the reason I call it that way comes from chip damage, which is just a small amount of damage. So you might be thinking that this would be easy enough to implement. And of course, we can just add a second bar, like here. And whenever we, we take damage, we just start a coroutine to change these alpha values here. Easy to do, right? Well, there are some tricky special cases involved that need to be handled. For example, let's say we take some damage and we also gain some health again. So depending on how much health we gain, we either gain more than we originally started with before showing the flash or less. And we have to kind of do different things depending on what is happening and what the player does. So the best way to plan and explain this is to draw a finite state machine, a FSM. I assume here that you know what that is, uh, as you probably already worked with animations in the editor or state machines in code or something similar to that. If not, uh, I recommend checking out tutorials about FSMs first. Okay, so in the initial state, our base state, so to speak, nothing changes and the health bar or any other kind of bar stays exactly as it is. Then two things might be happening. Either we gain health. In that case, we simply stay at the initial state. I assume here that updating the health is an instant operation and it's not another coroutine. And the other thing that might be happening is that we take damage and then we start our coroutine to blend in the white flash. Now the state blend in is a little bit more complicated. First of all, I defined here an initial health. And what I mean with this is the health we had at the initial state. And when, the, when we are in the blend in state, the white flash is coming in and the player manages to get more health than we originally started with, which is what I mean with this. Then we abort the flashing and we simply go back to the initial state. Uh, if the player instead gains only a little amount of health, less than, uh, still less than the initial health, then we stay at the blend-in state. The same is true for any amount of damage we take. And then the other thing that can happen is uh, the player doesn't do anything, and after a certain, of a certain amount of time, we simply go to the next state blend out. If we are at the blend out state and we gain a small amount of health, then we stay at the blend out state. If we instead gain enough health that it is more than we initially started with, we abort the blending and go back to the initial state. We also go back to the initial state when the blend out coroutine finishes. And the other thing that can happen that is a little bit special is that when we take damage while blending out, we want the flash to blend in again. Uh, this is so that we detect all damages and do not miss anything for the player. It also hints at an implementation detail that when we blend in, we cannot assume that the alpha value of the bar is zero and starts with zero. As you can see, it is not as easy as I might have thought at the beginning. It is also not too complicated, but without going through all these cases first, uh, it would be quite a challenge to implement correctly. Now let me show you the code. So here we have our chip bar class. It has a blend in time, it has a blend out time. It takes two images, one for the bar itself and one for the flash. And in the project itself, they are referenced here. And each of these images has the image type of filled so that we can adjust these values accordingly. So at awake, we just simply reset some values. And when the player is loading, at start, he sets the percentage of health he has at the moment. So when we start the game, 
we have a percentage 100% health and we simply set the chipper to represent this. And we adjust the player health with our heart and bad heart scripts, which are just triggers and when the player enters, they activate and destroy themselves. And when the player adds health, he adds the amount of health also to the chip bar. So if we add an amount of health, then we first check which state we are actually in. If we add the initial state and we gain health, we simply set the bar to the new value. If we add the blend in state and we gain health, then we check how much health did we gain already. And if it is more than the initial amount, then we stop this coroutine from blending in and just also go back to the initial state. And otherwise we simply adjust uh, the bar and the amount we have right now. The same is true for the uh, blend out just with uh, different states, different coroutines. So when we remove health, which is the more interesting part, we also check the state. And if we are at the initial state, we start a new blending coroutine. And if we are at the blend out state and we take damage, we also start a new blend in coroutine. But before that, we stop the current blend out coroutine. So we go from this state to this state. The coroutines themselves are quite simple. We uh, take the color of the flash and adjust the alpha values accordingly. And if we manage to go to the end, we simply go to the blend out state. The blend out coroutine is similar to the blend in coroutine, just that the alpha values go to zero instead of one. And when we finish the blend out coroutine, we go back to the initial state. So this is how you make a chip bar. It is certainly a useful way to give the player uh, more information on what is happening on the screen. And so you should consider implementing it into your own games. As always, thank you for watching. Leave a like, leave a follow, but most importantly, leave money on my bank account by buying one of my Unity assets. You can find the link to the store plus a link to the project in the description. Bye.